or break. Make it yours. Welcome back to the State Farm Analyst Desk. It's time for a clash of top lane titans as Red Canids Guigo continues his red hot international debut, facing off against LNG's rising wild card in Ole. So, a bit of a different focus here in the second matchup of the day, where we were very, you know, mid jungle and bot lane focused in the previous matchup. Now we turn our attention to the top side. It's just been an LPL thing all around this year that you want to play up towards the top side. I mean, they're the kind of one that just had that Varus on the weak side and let move it up to the top side. I think Ale in the LPL, ever since that he became the starter for LNG, really have had a journey where he has become uh, synonymous with a carry uh, in top lane style. You can see it with the kill participation, you can see it with the damage per minute. Everything of Ale's stats just screams he's a star top laner. I mean, I, I'm going to continue on that point there, Kaizen, uh, because the, the statistics, while looking good for both of these guys, uh, you have to recognize that extra step up by Ale in the matchup. Yeah, and uh, those stats are damn right terrifying. Damn. I mean, this guy has had three solo kills. We haven't even had three days of Worlds yet. Yeah, that's uh, nutty. So I think, yeah, it's, it's pretty nutty. And we should look at the kind of picks that he's playing. The Jax, the Fiora, picks that enable you to go for the 1v1 and look for these opportunities for solo kills. I think, fortunately for Red, for Red this is a style that they also emulate themselves in Guigo. He's a really, really good top laner who was a huge part of his team's uh, not quite miracle run, but really impressive run through the top of CB lull. So what I want to see out of Red is them playing around top and just say, hey, look, Ali has been doing super well, but we're going to take it right to him. We're going to keep our jungler top. We're going to be pushing for early Herald. And to the extent that we can, we're going to be looking for a favorable matchup because generally speaking, LNG does not counterpick for top lane. All right, so Guigo's going to have his work cut out for him. And then, of course, you add in that extra special magic that comes from the jungle over there on LNG. It's Tarzan, I think, hands down here in the play-ins. The consensus is that he's the king of the jungle. Exactly. I mean, it's kind of unfair that you have well, the player that many consider the second best jungler in the world here in your play-in stage. And there's going to be multiple ways that you're going to have to find out how to shut this guy down. One thing is obviously the Kiana. In a meta like this that's so skirmish heavy, so team fight heavy, Tarzan has really, really accelerated the pressure on this pick. So I feel like that's something you have to take away from him at the same time. So how do you contain a jungler at the same time looking to take a fight uh, to a pro prolific top laner uh, in Ale, Kaizen, when you take a look at this matchup and think about how ultimately it's going to be approached by the side of Red Knits? So I think it's going to come down to a lot of just jungle tracking. Just make sure that it's not as important that you get the the first gank in, but it's really important that you make sure that Tarzan doesn't get the first gank in. Uh, and something I want to talk about is also the influence of mid lane here. So Grethgar is a player who's a little bit unorthodox in some of his picks. We saw him play set. He's also known for playing Kled. What I want to see him doing is looking to play less for his individual lane and play more for supporting the side lane so that wherever possible, Tarzan is not getting a 1v1 or a 2v2 scenario. All right, don't let... Uh... Uh, don't let LNG have those 1v1 matchups or the 2v2s that they're looking for. Definitely stack the matchups. As we hand it back over to our casters for game number two, let's get a quick word from Red Canid's mid laner, Grevthar, and welcome to the Rift, presented by Oppo. I'm Grevthar. I'm the mid laner of Red Canid's Kalunga. It's really special, not only because I'm at Worlds, it's, it's more special because of the players that I'm here with. I have like my best friends and my friendship with Aegis is really strong and Gigo as well. I've known Gigo since he's like 14. Everyone is really like close to each other so it's the best experience I could ever have. My journey, I don't know if I was expecting to be at Worlds because in the first, the first split and the second one I've started as Academy so I don't know if ever passed it through, through my mind, but when I came to the main roster, I've, I've said to myself, I'm going at Worlds and you are going to make history.
Well, that was awesome and heartwarming to see as well from the side of Red Can. It's just so cool to see how much brotherly love they have within that team. And, uh, you know, just trying to make it as far as possible. And also showing that your dreams, uh, anyone out there, can come true. You can start out on Academy and make it to Worlds. Yeah. So uh, really cool to see. I think that's uh, what Play-Ins is all about, right? Because you can make it to Worlds, you can fight your way there, and then you can, of course, if you do well, if you break expectations, you actually can go to the group stage. You can play against some of the strongest teams. Well, you can play against Dom Juan Kia, defending world champions, if you're able to pull it off. Absolutely. And speaking of pulling things off, Red Canets, you know, they started off with the win yesterday, but I feel like today is where their real test begins. They're going to be going up against LNG Esports, the fourth seed from the LPL. And so far looking like the first seed in this group, at least based on what we can tell from their play so far. Yeah. But of course, you know, anything can happen. It's a best of one. And I think it will really come down to as well what happens in this draft. Indeed, and we'll go ahead and jump right into that right now. As you see LeBlanc, kind of a almost permanent fixture in terms of those bands, taking away Tarzan's Kiana, which he played both games yesterday against Honda Life Esports and Peace, so that targeted ban. See the Nami removal here, not gonna let JoJo play that one. See if they'll leave the Lucian open though themselves. Might be something to look at here for LNG. And for the side of Red Cannon, the player that's impressed me the most has been Grevthar. I think if you look at his champion pool, it's much wider than a lot of the players that play the mid lane in CBLOL, and he is so incredible at set, for example, even when he pulled it out yesterday, I think it surprised a lot of people at his proficiency on the champion, his ability to set up engages. So I wonder if the priority will actually kind of break our traditional rules of drafting here for Worlds so far, if they'll look for a champion for him early. We're about to find out. Yeah. Pretty cool to see the Amumu get the respect he deserves, crying no longer, as he has some friends there on the ban list. They're still going to take the MF, though, which is very interesting to see. Obviously, the duo of MF Amumu has been shown many times. It's extremely strong, but Red Cannon say, well, she's just strong by herself as well. And this is the Lucian I was talking about that LNG did not ban coming through here on red side now. and. This is obviously very flexible. They'll take the Zed. So this is what, you know, I was kind of expecting to see for Tarzan here in the jungle, considering the Kiana was removed. He definitely seems like one of the early adopters in our new Ghostblade meta in terms of setting up for those high mobility assassins. So Zed kind of being the next best thing here. As we see very quick lock-ins here on the solo lanes, Grevthar probably going to end, end up playing that Aurelia, and you do see the Kennen going into the top side. The problem with this that is that it's blind, and this gives a lot of counterpick potential here to LNG right now before we hit that second ban phase. Yeah, very interesting to see the Kennen this early on. Jace makes me wonder if there's ever going to be some kind of flex with that Kennen. We used to see support Kennen back in the day, even mid Kennen, but. Um, Probably not in this meta. I mean, I suppose maybe alongside of the MF, but we'll have to wait and see. And as you mentioned, the Jace does get locked in here for the side of LNG. Yeah, I mean, you put the Jace on the top side against Gigo here, and you're just going to have a really tough time as the cannon against Ale. But we saw just yesterday will absolutely destroy in bad matchups on the top side of the map. He did it yesterday, and I think given the, the history here, he will do it again if that cannon is indeed in the top side. And I think we have to assume that. The ban here on the Leona is an obvious one with the Amumu already taken away. Leona still 100% win rate at Worlds 5 and 0. The next best thing here to pair with the MF plays a very similar role. And that's going to be taken away straight out of the gates. And unfortunately for Red Cannons here, the draft that LNG has is pretty open-ended at the moment. You don't really necessarily even know that Lucian's going to be playing in the bot lane or mid. So banning here in the second phase for Red Cannons is actually quite difficult. Whereas, unfortunately for Red Cannons, they've kind of put their draft all into these soul laners early on. So it's really easy to just target that support role now. Absolutely. We see a couple of support bands already. What else are we going to see as we're running out of time here? And it's going to be the Jarvan, actually. Uh, most likely in the jungle, as Emily did put very well, I believe, in our first countdown yesterday. He can be flexed into a lot of different roles, sure. but it's probably going into the jungle. And uh, it does make sense, given what we do see here so far. As what is going to be the last band I here mean... on the side of Red Canids? You don't have a strong front line, so banning something like a Rakan here isn't as strong of a ban, even though, you know, there's a lot of target already with the Braum ban there for the bottom side of the map. But you don't know 
where, who the AD carry is going to be necessarily. So it's kind of an awkward one. I think just taking away Silas, one of Icon's best champions and one of the most meta champions right now here in Worlds for the mid lane uh, is a pretty safe bet. They'll take the Rakan away themselves though, instantly. So it's a pretty easy pick here for <laughs> the side of LNG. And now they just have to wait and see those final puzzle pieces here before they choose uh, whether this Lucian is going to be going into the mid lane or whether he's going to be the AD carry. Yeah, still have to wait for this one as waiting on this last pick now from the side of Rape Cannon. Suppose they have a couple. We'll look at that. Xin Zhao is going to be the choice. Most likely going to be in the hands of Aegis as he will pick that one up. And now we are looking at a support pick. And again, there, are, there were a bunch of supports that were taken off the board. I mean, you see the Braum, the Leona, the Yamumu, Nami, obviously the Rakan that was taken here by Iwandi. What will the Red Cannons go for? I mean, in terms of the tier list, you know, Alistair just kind of screams at you. It kind of pops into your mind as one of the best supports they could pick up considering the options. They have a decent amount of engage, but they'll go for the Lulu instead and give a lot more mobility to a composition that is very reliant on its engage, right, between the Cannon, the Aurelia, and the Xinjiao that are going to be looking to dive in and get on top of that Lucian. Do see the Gragas coming through, which means, well, I say that. <laughs> There's a lot yeah. being teased here. Always got to wait until those lock-ins come through. I guess maybe they're wondering if they need more AP damage just up front. Um, obviously, if you do throw it into the mid lane, which is what this uh, could definitely yeah. look like at this point, uh, you are actually going to be able to build some decent items. Yeah. Um, there is always the flexibility for the Zed to go mid, but I highly doubt that, that I mean, will be the choice here. I'd love to see it. You know, brings me back to, uh, you know, Faker Ryu and, and the most iconic Zed games of our era. But Swap's a little bit late if he's going to be doing <laughs> it. Uh, I would love to see it. It would be really fun. The other thing to, to note is that, of course, Icon did play the Gragas just yesterday yeah. in that matchup against Chovy's Trindamir. So he's obviously well versed on it. He's played it a lot. And it does look like he's actually going to be playing it mid here. So Gragas will be the jungle pick. Huh. And. LNG, look at they're playing with their food a little bit with this draft, but they have a very well-rounded damage profile. They have a lot of assassination potential here. And if you could just avoid, you know, getting de dealing with the mobility that Lulu's going to provide around the map and explode the MF early, if you can get on top of that misfortune with this Zed pick, you have a lot of power to actually just win these early skirmishes, remove that damage early, and then end up winning those straight front-to-back team fights. Very interesting stuff this time around. I really do like that Lulu, uh, your ability to uh, just, you know, polymorph something like a Zed or a Lucian if you can get in range, but also the wild growth to try to stem some of that assassination damage that does come out. Also Whimsy alongside of uh, the Misfortune, obviously some great synergy there as well. Biggest surprise I think is seeing the Zed going into the mid lane and for for a good 10 extra seconds, I was like, oh, I think we're just going to redo the draft <laughs> because they must have, you know, had some issue with swapping the champion or maybe they forgot. No, he's actually playing Zed in the mid lane as we return to this meta. It's been a while. If I'm not mistaken, it was Pentanet GG who actually played one game of Zed mid yes. uh, last time that we had a big international competition in MSI. So it has been quite some time since I've seen it. I could have looked to collapse onto him here, but he'll be just fine. My biggest concern at the outset of this draft is what we mentioned, and, and it kind of screamed at us, uh, was the obvious counterpick to the cannon here in the chase. And Ale is the type of player... I mean, look, he plays in the LPL. The LPL is one of the most unforgiving regions in terms of how it's played, how aggressive you solo lane. Um, you know, the Korean Jace was kind of a big meme for a while, and it was the a standard topic that everyone would bring up when you talk about Jace gaps and controlling top lane and getting that counter pick matchup. But the LPL is another region that loves their Jace and has all year long. And if Gigo actually falls behind early, uh, it could be a big disaster here uh, for Red Cannons. And that's exactly what LNG are trying to do with this Jace pick alone. And from there, if you get a tempo advantage, winning these early objective fights becomes a lot easier. Yeah, I mean, a Jace with priority is one of the most fun things to have as a team. And speaking of which, he is not being very forgiving just in the trades already. He's got his gun out once again. We got some aggressive trading in the bottom lane as well. Just 
a bit of poking back and forth. Not going to be going all in like uh, what we saw at Avista in the last game at level one, but a nice amount of damage done to Titan as we do start off with this one. Again, I I kind of just want to see what we can see out of Zed versus Aurelia as well. It's going to be a really awesome matchup to watch uh, develop here in mid lane. Yeah. Something I, I took note of yesterday after watching LNG's games is that um, Light as a player will sometimes overextend, not in lane, but actually in the mid game. So something to look out for for him on Lucian. He's a lot more mobile than the Aphelios we saw as Grevthar. Yeah, that was a, a little bit aggressive, right? They don't know exactly where Aegis is. They have a massive minion wave that was coming into the turret right there. So Icon and Tarzan just call that one off. Maybe just putting the fear into the hearts of Grevthar and the Red Cannons. Yeah, a nice little path over there. And when you're that far forward, you could sometimes actually end up punishing. Grevthar is able to go back and will be walking back towards lane now. But going back to the point I was making about Light, as we take a look at this 2v2 exchange, um, I, I feel like one way that Red Cannons here can really punish LNG going in the mid game is trying to isolate Light and trying to blow him up because you do have really nice engage tools. You have the Jin Zhao, you have the Kennen, and initiation and trapping this AD carry is going to be a, a big name of the game in terms of how these later team fights are going to play out here for Red Cannons in the mid game and beyond. So for Light, positioning is going to be paramount. And we'll see if he ends up picking up the Gale Force as well this game around to see if uh, he can get even more mobility just to make sure he isn't picked off early in these fights. Yeah. Saw some uh, interesting Gale Force play yesterday. <laughs> yeah, we certainly but, did. Uh, <laughs> it's still good. It's still very good, especially if you are looking to get a little bit of extra mobility. So it's uh, definitely something to consider here as Ali still waiting around. Eagle just, uh, you know, training back here. There was the cannon wave, so I thought Ali would just go back and uh, and reset after he pushed that one in, but instead did decide to stick around as Aegis is going to be spotted here on the ward. And that should mean that Light and Iwandi are safe, even though Aegis is still sticking around. Yeah. And Gigo's actually handled this matchup at the beginning of it pretty well, actually. He's not finding himself falling too far behind. We have seen, uh, you know, better top laners than he, you know, historically speaking at Worlds, actually end up having a really tough time in this matchup, but he's doing pretty well. He finally will see Ale back by and teleport in. And now that he's got his first item online, it could be a little bit more threatening to that very squishy cannon. Meanwhile, in the mid lane, you know, it's been kind of quiet. Uh, you know, we were hoping for some explosive play, but it's still very early. No level six for either of these players. So there's not really any kill potential in the solo lane until, you know, we see someone overextend or a small mistake is made. That's just one of the great things about Misfortune. It's annoys some players, stops some backs. <laughs> it's very annoying. Um, definitely one of the worst. Not quite Teemo level, but, you know, a solid Master Yi, perhaps, uh, in the annoyance scale there. As Ali just kind of forced to teleport here out of Vigo. Just trading it back and forth, pretty standard stuff. Uh, Take a look at this, though. We do have Aegis looking for a gank up on the top side. Flash comes in, and all I just says, nah, -uh, you're not getting in range for that one. Reads that like a book, especially because he had the ward there in the brush, so he knew what to expect. Yeah, does end up getting out of here pretty safely, but ends up losing his flash, unfortunately. So nice punish there by Aegis, who's now actually going to invade this red side jungle, knowing that Ale had to back and doesn't have teleport. This is when level six is hit for Grevthar, trying to be aggressive here. He's not alone. Yeah, we have Iwandi nearby as well. And you can see that uh, no mana here on Grevthar, he just used his ultimate as well. So it's just going to say, yeah, I just kind of have to back here. Tarzan, you know, reading the play very well. He's got Iwandi nearby. He knows he can be extremely aggressive because the Aurelia is probably going to back away. And they he can just go ahead and pick up that top Rift Scuttler. So. Interesting that he does put his priority on that one. Gonna get the teleport as well out of Grepthar. And Icon is up in ultimate ability at this point in, in time, but it's not like Aurelia will be in too much kill potential before the Zed gets too many items. Yeah, obviously not gonna be able to put her in kill range there, um, you know, at this stage in time, but ends up being totally fine for her. Looking at this current state, you know, considering 
the uh, matchup with Kennen, obviously how LNG has looked very dominant in their early games. It's a pretty nice game for Red Cats. They've actually got themselves a small gold lead here early. It's very, very small, obviously, but they're actually, you know, playing this out very, very slowly and carefully, considering how this comp is going to function in some of these mid-game fights. This is the best start you could really hope for outside of LNG making a huge mistake. So what looked like what could have been a one-sided game here hasn't necessarily started that way. So far cry from what we saw in that Hanwha Life game moments ago. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, definitely got some fair League of Legends. Just head to head here. Grepthar has been landing some nice stuns. And actually, they did see the Lulu. Tarzan just pops the Predator. They have I want in nearby, but they may not know about Titan. It's a three on three heads up going in here. Tarzan taking a little bit too much damage. And that is first blood given over to Titan. We also got a gank in the top side. No flash here for Ale. And make that two kills under the belt of the Red Cannon. And this seems like a miscommunication issue here for LNG because there should be enough information that Titan is missing that you have to be a little bit more careful there and the way as Icon will have to dash away to his clone here. Oh, he's going back in actually. Uh, just I suppose going to put down a little bit of the hurt, a little bit of uh, <laughs> pressure there, but you can continue. Wolf. Yeah, no, it's, uh, you know, you never know with these two teams when they're going to fight. So I wanted to give yeah. you some space there do that play by play thing. But, um, you know, the way they played around Vision there where actually they showed the Lulu but kept Titan missing there it was actually really cool to see, and unfortunately, Tarzan kind of overextended, took the bait there. It looked like a very winnable fight for LNG without the misfortune being there, but when she appears, she does so much burst damage in these early skirmishes, so... Ends up picking up that early kill here. Red Cannon's now leading two kills to zero, a thousand gold up right now. They're gonna take that first Rift Herald, so lots of advantages across the board. As you take a look at this, Titan just appears. The extra slow he has here from the rain is massive. And Grepthar has enough damage at this early game that he can actually help secure that kill. No tankiness on this Gragas. Look <laughs> at how happy he is. Yeah, I mean, at, uh, at this point, you see everybody's happy. Everybody in the coaching booth, we got neck holds and everything. We're just getting in there. And, uh, I mean, you got to be ecstatic, right? LNG, they're the favorites in the group, and you're winning yeah. against them right now. You're up 1,000 gold. You just got that Rift Herald as well. Like, this has got to be the best feeling in the world for them right now. And now, you've just got to hold on to it. Yeah, that's all they got to do. It's not an easy feat against a team this good, but I mean, you, you got the start. You proved to yourself that you can do it. Let's see what they can follow up with. I really like their composition, too. Uh, and from ahead, it becomes a lot easier to play this. You have so much split pushing power with this Aurelia later on if she gets fed enough. And one assist is just the beginning of where she wants to be heading with that. But still, really liking the chances here for Red Cannons at this early state. Don't have enough control to look for this Rift Herald just yet. Is that gonna, that's going to be the focus point for Vision. Uh oh There's that Polymorph once again. Awanji's going to have to be careful about that. As the Culling will come out, just trying to dissuade them from actually fighting. But this is all going to be Red Cannon's bottom side of the map because their jungler is nearby. So he just, he has the Rift Herald. And you can see he's like, hmm, do I look to put pressure on the bottom side? Do we push there or do we go for the Drake? Where's the Gragas? And it seems like they have uh, figured it out. So guys, Verizon 5G, all chat. If you guys want to get out there, give your opinion, give your cheers to some of the players, some of the teams here at Worlds. Make sure you go on Twitter and hashtag Verizon 5G, all chat, and you can have your message read here on live studio. So here we go. We got an engage down on the bottom side. Happened almost too fast for me to react to as the Lulu did die. Really nice. Uh, flash here as Teton is looking for the follow-up. He's going to use heal, actually, to try to catch up to them, but they will just be able to body slam away. They were originally going for Teton, but he did flash. As now we got another engage up in the top side. This time around, the stun not quite landing from the Kennen, and Ale, he's suffering, but at least he will survive. Yeah, Ale up here going to be fine. They get the kill on the bottom side of the map, which is pretty massive. Everybody escapes. You get the heal out of Teton, and... It's a pretty big momentum shift here for LNG, where everything finally starts to feel a little bit better across the map. It's not enough control, unfortunately, with all the damage on those players on the bottom side for LNG for them to be able to rotate in and take the Drake. But because of that push up on the top side of the map for Gigo, they're actually going to send Iwandi and Tarzan up here to look for the punish. This ward is going to get insane value here for Gigo as he's able to react quickly here and back off. 
Yeah, totally fine, especially because he is cannon with flash as well, has all the vision. He's <sighs> just biding his time in that, and that top lane has been pretty easy for him. I think that this arm guard especially is going to get huge value when you're considering two AD solo laners and Illusion, of course, the AD carry down on the bottom side. Yeah, I see Ale backs and teleports back into lane, but the red cannons, after deflecting that top pressure, are going to grow up here to shove this wave into the bottom turret. And look at JoJo's positioning here. He's trying to zone out and gain some extra information here, and they can look to start up this Drake. This is a really nice macro play here from red cannons. Rift Herald's down with all this pressure. It's a tough call to make as LNG. How do you both defend the Rift Herald and rotate in to, rotate, rotate in to deny this Drake? You can't do both, so extra gold going in there with those plates. They grab this first Infernal very late into the game, but still, the lead continues here for Red Can. It's nice macro play. Yeah, still absolutely fantastic. Looks like this top lane a little bit less good for the side of Gigo as we got an all-in. Ale just smacks him with the hammer and lays down the smackdown. There you go. Able to get some revenge after an unfortunate laning phase. As now we do have the culling on the bottom side, but man, that is huge for LNG trying to get back in this game. Yeah, massive, massive pick there, because that's going to be plate gold going over to Ale now. A lot of denied CS as well with the wave crashing through. Really unfortunate timing here for Gigo to be picked off. He does have teleport, but still, that's a really, really nice exchange there on the top side of the map. And when you're that low on health, you can't use your slicing Maelstrom to actually turn this fight or to look to grab a stun. He uses the stun early. Or Proxus on early, rather, but look at this minion wave. Like, there's not much you could do here as Gigo. And yes, he does flash, but all he follow flashes in, so he's at least able to trade summoners. Well, there's no way you can actually try to outplay him there with that low health. It's kind of an unescapable situation. Yeah, I think just, uh, you know, about five, ten seconds before the kill actually happened, he had to not step up and take all that free damage as now he's trying to get another ward down, but he might be even in more hurt here. Has no flashes available. He face checks the warded brush. And unfortunately for him, the timing was perfect for LNG. The roam up to the top side as they will pick up the red pan. It's top laner once again. And even looking for a little bit more, they're trying to extend onto the Xin Zhao here. Aegis alone in the jungle is going to have to use that ultimate. And now he is going to flash over to his Aurelia as they're getting back in here, actually. As we do have the Vanguard's Edge and a stun landing. The damage is there on top of Tarzan. And Grepthar is able to turn that around in a big way. Yeah. It's, it's a pretty big win here to grab that kill, but the, the same is true for the turret that Ale takes down during the interim. The free farm that Light is getting on the bottom of the map. Now, if they could turn this into a Rift Herald as well, they'll be able to get a lot more gold out of this potentially, but still a lot of resources had to be committed here by Red Cannons to make that play happen. Very high risk, not to mention that moments before they did lose Gigo, uh, you know, once again on that top side of the map. And we talked about how the Jace matchup could be oppressive. He survived the early laning phase, but now with LNG finally finding this one choke hole in the map where they can actually just grab onto the cannon and just kind of farm him repeatedly, you're starting to see that gold lead fade away. Only 400 gold behind now LNG, really starting to make a big comeback. Yeah, definitely. You can see the gold difference, and a lot of it is in the top side. So many of those plates, as you mentioned, went over to Ale. Not to mention two kills as well in their favor. If you do look on the red cannon side, they have a pretty massive lead down in the bottom lane, actually. That first kill going over to Titan, as well as a small CS lead, but it does amount to about a thousand gold in favor. I believe some of those uh, turret plates as well helping them out as uh, <laughs> Icon's just gonna stare him down, trying to put the fear of death into Titan but we know he's not scared. He's got both of his summoners down now and his ghost blade for a moment, so still advantage LNG in this exchange, but he survives with his life, continues to free farm here in mid. I say free farm, but obviously with the cost of those summoners. Gigo once again, potentially the target here, but he's not alone. Red Cat's actually really trying to set this one up with a lot of vision control here. Very difficult for LNG to identify they're all down here, but as a result, they back away. That one ward on these Gromps is actually going, or not Gromps, rather, Krugs, is going to be so valuable. <laughs> yeah. Imagine if there was two Gromps in that hole. That'd be, uh, Ooh, that'd be a lot of gold in that pit. Yeah. I, don't know if we can do, I don't know if we can do that. Um, <laughs> as, uh, yeah, I mean, that ward is getting all the vision. I mean, it's, it's telling LNG everything they need to know. And you can see, he's down here as well. Just going to farm this up, and he... 
have the Rakan backing away. So it's not like LNG are actually looking to dive here. Jojo was sticking around just in case. And they'll just both back away, get some buys in. We did have our MasterCard first Mythic of the game. I believe it was one of those Eclipses that did get built. Uh, wouldn't be surprised if it was the Jace, as we do have a one-on-one -on -one here, and Tarzan is just gonna bop down Titan, just like that. Looks like he just walked into that brush, and Tarzan was like, hello, friend. Yeah, I will take you down. That's that's unfortunate when you're running into a Gragas who's got really easy CC lockdown and a ton of extra damage. I mean, if you look at his items, he's not massively, you know, ahead or extremely fed, but the alternator plus that blasting wand is going to be enough to, at this early stage of the game, as we're approaching mid-game, blow up an MF very quickly, especially one that does not have those two summoners. This is where you cast your mind back to that moment in the mid lane where he was almost picked and had to use both. Yeah. Now, the second time he's found, he's got no panic, or rather, get out of jail free card, panic button to, uh, to flash away with, and Tarzan's going to pick up a second kill here. This will also, of course, with that extra pressure on the map, give them a second Drake. Yeah. And LNG are oh, really boy. starting to take all the vision away from the bottom side of the map. Yeah, and you, you really need to keep in mind that this has all happened in the last four or so minutes, four or five minutes, right? When the Chase got the first solo kill up in the top side, he pushed all the plates and took down the turret. Then they got the summoners and the kill onto Teton, as well as getting a gigantic push in the bottom lane. So. Alongside of that, they get the Cloud Drake, and everything is just slowly, but also very suddenly, got into the hands of LNG. Psycon is doing a lot of standing around, trying to be intimidating. I yeah, he has, to, he has to wait. He doesn't have a lot of vision, you know, obviously on, on the top side of the map. The vision control for LNG has been towards the bottom side, and they didn't have Ale coming in just yet, so... Wanted to play it safe there, but you know with the charge going through onto the top side of the map that you'll have enough time to clear that one off alone as Icon. And not to mention that, yes, it's small value coming through on this Rift Herald, but there's no plates at this stage of the game. You're not getting the same amount of value as Ale did earlier on. As Teton, once again in the mid lane. Oh, man. Got to be so careful <laughs> against this Cobb. Yeah, you really have to. And Aegis, he's also playing with fire, obviously. The Xin Zhao is going to have a bit of an easier time, but Titan with no summoners and only a Ghost Blade. You can see how scary it is. I mean, everybody is just charging him down. You got the Rakan, you have the Jace who's looking to jump in on you. And uh, even the Gragas, we saw the Rocket Bell coming out of Tarzan. Like, he was licking his lips, looking for that kill. Not quite come in, though. As uh, now, he just doing a little bit of frontlining here. Not scared to get aggressive in the enemy jungle as even though, oh, okay, a nice amount of damage just come over the wall, but now that is MF alt down. A little bit of happy feeding here for LNG, you know? They are able to, uh, red cannons here, put the pressure on in the middle of the red side jungle, while also Guigo gets free turret pressure there and grabs the turret itself there on the bottom side of the map. So we're gonna see a big teleport flank. This is gigantic, and look at the engage on the two of them. Jojo and Aegis getting totally caught out here in their own jungle. He just now trying to turn it around. He's not able to take down the Rakan. And the Zed of all people gets the double kill. These assassins getting out of control in this map. Now yeah, LNG to see an opportunity to teleport behind. The assassins, as you mentioned, doing so much burst damage here. I mean, when you have a Zed and a Jace getting behind a squishy team, it's not going to be a good time for Ed Cannons there. And yes, they did get the turret on the bottom side of the map with Gigo, but you're not able to turn that into anything if you can't keep vision of your own jungle enough to where you d you know these teleports aren't going to happen. Maybe extending that far to try to give that cannon enough pressure to get the turret is actually too much of a liability. Because if this works out, you put the pressure on the, in the red side jungle and get the turret then back away for free, you're just getting a little bit of extra gold. I mean, you look at the map here, look at where everybody is right now. And as you can see, this is actually just going to be the final moments here where they do try to trade back a kill for Aegis and are unsuccessful. But Grevthar is so far away from this type of exchange because he was pushing so deep that even he can't help. Gigo comes in to teleport, but the fight is over before he can actually pop his ultimate and make an impact. Well, we do have a fight here. As of course, we did take a look at that new Axe Effect replay, but now we're just taking a look at the new effect of the Lulu dying as she just immediately does go down. And this is getting dicey very quickly for the side of Red Cannons. They're just getting caught all over the map, and LNG, they're an LPL team, and they are just finding you everywhere on this one. 
As we do have Daniel Cox is saying, show this live if you are not fake tweeting at LOL Esports. By the way, Ali is still looking like a top five top laner so far in predictions. Great talents. Yes, I do agree. This guy yeah, he's, he's kind of going insane. He's kind of going insane. And the lead, as you mentioned, it's very snowball-y now for LNG. They had a little bit of a deficit at the beginning of the game. But as the pace of the game picked up and the pick potential was real, they found so many opportunities like this one here. And when you look at the burst damage that LNG has in spades with the CC that Iwandi could pull off here, it's really easy to just get in and get out. You grab a kill, you reset, and even the bullet time isn't able to deter LNG from continuing the chase here so much oh. burst in this roster <laughs> with all the lethality that this this roster brings with these itemizations they're having i mean with two eclipses you've got a gragas who's got explosive damage and you know the ability to cc you've got the recon as red cannons you don't even feel comfortable getting into your jungle to remove those wards that could set for those flank teleports like we saw from icon earlier griftar will be able to get out of this one relatively unscathed but You've got to start thinking about where these next fights are going to happen as Red Cans. You don't have a Drake lead. Baron is going to be where you want to have a stand, but you need ward control. It's just a little bit of a back massage here to push the cannons away. Yeah, and uh, unfortunately at this point in time, I think LNG on the 5v5 are looking good. Red cannons, they need some kind of flank. If it's the Aurelia, if it's the cannon, that's all good. Even the Xintao can really mix things up. If you're going to try to go for a 5v5, I think just trying to run at the enemy is not going to work. They have too much CC. They have too much backline access. You're going to get yourself strung out, and it's not going to look good. I mean, the combo they have, if you can, Vanguard's Edge from the flank and then set up for the slicing Maelstrom, get a few stuns, and then bullet time comes in on top of it. It's, yeah. there's, a, there's a hope, right, with this comp. Absolutely. That's what they really need to do. But you can see that LNG are doing a pretty good job of spreading themselves out themselves, but maybe a little bit too much. This dragon is getting low. It's looking good to go into the hands of Aegis here, as LNG will just give that one over, not looking to go for the fight. Red Cannons get in, and they get out without losing anyone. Yeah, I feel like Red Cannon's comp is also clumped up like this, grouped. Um, sometimes at its strongest against a composition like what LNG is running, where they can get those one-off picks, right? They have so much explosive burst damage. And when you do group up like this onto an objective, and LNG can't really push the issue, it's it's kind of like looking for a coin flip there if you actually do engage onto that. Uh, it, it, it really puts the variance level of how your comp is going to operate a lot lower. Because, yes, the flank potential you were talking about is very strong too, but when the, the five fingers are stronger than the one, right? Or the fist is stronger than the five fingers, whatever the term oh, is for that. Titan might just die here. The wild growth is used, and Tarzan's looking for the cask. He's not going to get it. Have they overextended is the question. Titan looking for the bullet time over the wall, not going to go down, and you can see the burst uh -oh. damage is coming in, and now the cannon just disappears as Icon isn't even needed. And that is the pick you need. You take down Aurelia, you take down Kennen, and all of a sudden, that flank and team fight potential of Red Can is just taken away. I mean, Giga wanted to use a slicing Maelstrom there. That's why he was walking forward. That's what he was trying to set up for, but he's just burst down before it can go off. And this is the story of how this composition can fall apart one by one, step by step. If you're looking for those flanks, you're also putting yourself at risk. If you're looking for the engage, you can be focused that quickly in a blink of an eye before you can press your R key. You're going to be in the death realm. And this means LNG have full control over the top side of the map. They're going to look to put some pressure on this turret, clear that vision around the Baron pit up because they're starting to get to the point where they can rush that one down very quickly. As Red Cannons, you just don't have any vision. Look at the lack of vision here. I mean, they could be doing it right now. For all you know, you have no information whatsoever. Yeah. I mean, they're not, which I suppose is a good thing for the side of Red Cannons, but LNG, they probably got a lot of gold in their pockets as well as Icon is in a little bit of a funky situation, and he did use his shade, but it is going to be I, okay, I think, as he is going to be able to back away with that scuttle uh, speed as well. And take a look at the top lane here. Even Ale is comfortable enough to just push in and wait for this kill potentially titan if he took that wrong side he's still gonna die actually over the wall as he just timed it perfectly and ali is able to dunk once again yep flash forward blow up that misfortune and now there is just simply no way to contest the baron uh -oh. don't even have to start it though skigo's <laughs> gonna get caught oh no he used his lightning rush they're not gonna totally commit to that one as uh, he still does have stopwatch. Probably a good idea 
from Icon. He's able to hold it back, and he says, well, we're, we're just going to get the Baron anyway. It's fine. I was I mean, able to zone him away. The thing is, nobody can come over here to stop this Baron through a choke point. You have no vision. So what, what could be the case right now, even though they are finishing this Baron, is what happened the last three times when Red Cans didn't have any ideas. If you funnel through that choke point trying to clear wards, and then suddenly you get hit by all the bursts that LNG has, you lose your misfortune, you lose your cannon. Cannon also having to flash. Unfortunately, Gigo means he has less options to get on top of this comp and hit that slicing maelstrom. And even slicing maelstrom, if you can get it into multiple people, it takes a few moments for that effect to stack and set up the stun. And in that brief moment, against this much lethality on LNG, you're just simply not going to be able to pull that off unless you can have that perfect stopwatch like you were talking about. He holds on to that one. That is something that is going to be so critical. But this game is off the rails pretty quickly. Yeah, LNG gonna enjoy themselves a nice little Red Bull Baron power play at this point in time. When I say little, it's already 1800. They are pushing down the mid lane. They're not even splitting. They're just like, no, we'll just, we'll just go five people mid. I mean, <laughs> and their comp actually works pretty well with that as well. You mentioned the engage potential of the Gragas and the Rakan. You just press a couple of your buttons. The one thing that they don't have is flash here on Iwandi. But other than that, I mean, you can just group up. You've got insane siege potential oh, yeah. just with Jace. I mean, Gragas and, uh, too, yeah. and the, the Lucian can obviously just pop his ultimate on anyone who gets nearby. They can't touch you. Just just stop the uh, the flank. One more you should be totally fine. One more chance for Red Cans here. Grab throw on the oh, flank. Oh, Icon's playing with his food, too. He's even going in on this one. Not sure about that, but he's got the follow-up. Nice wild growth. And finally, we see the slicing Maelstrom, but it feels like we should have seen it maybe five or ten minutes ago because now it's just a little bit too little too late. Azale is still full health. Nearly kills Jojo. Jesus. Gonna almost take him down. And this might just be LNG winning here. They still have this Baron. And they are going to be able to poke this one down. Another nice knock up from the Rakan. Azale goes in. The team goes in. And everybody's just looking to wipe them up here in the fountain. As we still have Baron, remember, guys. They're just yep. going to go ahead, take down the two turrets, and look to end this game and take their third victory of planes here for Group A at the World's Planes Group Stage. LNG with a rocky start to the beginning of this game. They played the Zed mid for Icon. Didn't expect to see that. Thought it would be the Gragas that was playing, uh, being played there a second time for him. But no, they changed it up. But the burst potential in this composition that has extremely strong lethality between the Zed, obviously, the Gragas gets set up for the kills, and the Jace that got fed early means that you can just simply kill anyone who comes near. And we talked about the Kennen, right? Survived early in the lane, but couldn't ever set up for a single slicing maelstrom in a team fight. And this is one of those frustrating losses yeah. that you're going to take in this play-in stage as, you know, one of the regions that comes in as underdogs here. You feel like, man, this was so winnable. We had the early game. We had a thousand gold to lead. We were up. We had so much control of vision, but you couldn't stick the landing when the top lane started to explode and your composition is so weak against that type of burst damage. Yeah, I mean, that was really the issue, right? The top lane kind of exploding, and they weren't really able to get a snowball going. The Rift Herald got dropped down so late as well, actually right before it was about to expire down in the bottom side. So you got your, your AD carry fed, but it was just a little bit too late, and immediately LNG pounced on that. So, guys, we will have our next game. It will be Infinity Esports up against Peace, but before we do go to a break, we do want to take a look at some beautiful scenes from our host country, Iceland. So take a look. Make or break. Make it yours. I woke up to the morning sky first. Baby blue, just like we rehearsed.
Make or break. Make it yours. <laughs> Welcome back to Iceland for Walls 2021. Play in stage. I'm Law, joined by Babib from Peace Oceanian team. I'm sorry things didn't go so good for you uh, so far in the tournament. Uh, I, I want to talk about the difficulties you ran into so far. First, uh, having to sub in a top laner. You brought in Fizichachi. Can you tell mm -hmm. me about that and how he's been fitting in with the team so far and adapting to what you guys have been doing for the whole year? Um, Chachi has definitely been like. I mean, it's definitely been very easy to implement him into the team. Um, he's someone with a lot of competitive experience and uh, also working with like Mad Lions. He's definitely like his skill in like a macro sense is definitely like quite high. So he's even like become sort of a voice uh, in our mid game macro. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, he's he's really good. Yeah, and I do want to say that you haven't been drafted in the easiest groups when you think that you have to play against Homo Life Esports, uh, mm -hmm. the likes of uh, LNG as well. Uh, is there anything you've been able to learn so far from these teams, even though you haven't been able to win against them? Um, I suppose when you verse like super strong teams, I think the main uh, thing that is is just very difficult is like their laning and just mm -hmm. one small little mistake is just like kind of like game over. So. Um, I think just refining all of the small details is like very important versus, versus like super strong teams. All right. Well, still, this is not over yet. Uh, yeah. I feel like everyone needs to stay positive. What is going to be the focus for the games to go so that you have still a chance to make it out of groups? I think we figured out like what things that we want to play, and like I said, I think it's just refining those like small details and you know just playing really confidently, like playing as a team. Like every world is just about what team work plays the best, not individual. So that's going to be very important. And yeah. Well, I really hope you guys can find what you need on time. But again, thank you so much for thank giving you. me this interview today and good luck on the rest of your games. Thank you very much. Make or break. Make it yours.